Mark Warnke here with packoats.com. I saw a question on Facebook about shelters. There's a lot of people building shelters and what should they build and how do you do it? And you got babies right now and how do you accommodate adults and try to optimize your time? And I understand all that because I've dealt with it. So this is my system and it's worked really well. Um, there's not a lot I would change about it. And this is like my sixth or seventh generation on this new property uh, that I got in. The thing to think about is a, is a goat will dominate that area. And so I let him dominate a small area that he can functionally lay in. If this separator wasn't here, a subdominant wouldn't lay right next to him. But because this separator is here, a little subdominant will lay here and not be worried about him. And very often what'll happen is two subdominants that are buddies will be in each stall. So really I can get two, four, six, eight, 10, 12 in the bottom if everybody kind of has a buddy. Now that doesn't fully work because one will chase another and then they'll mix around. You know, all the rain comes in, everybody bucks for position. That's when I went to the, to the nests. The nests have been a huge advantage. And the nests allow for three more beds up high. I thought that that would end up being where uh, a premium bedding spot. And it's really actually not. It seems to be the juveniles that like it up there. And it's actually quite hard for all the goats to climb. You can see them take their time. They took a long time to figure out how to climb this. This was much more difficult for a goat to climb than I thought it would be. But the nice part is it, it works that way. The other part is because of the way I constructed this, when a, when a goat's coming up here, the way this guy escapes to get away from this goat is he comes down here. And so that was really a good move that I didn't anticipate. That was just a luck, but, but it cycles really nicely. Now the negative of this is that this wood is eventually gonna erode. I'm gonna have to replace this. These have been up for two years now though, and a lot of them are still holding well, but you can see that one's beginning to separate. I'm gonna have to repair the floor of that because they pee in these and it's eventually rotting the wood from the bottom. So that's kind of the negative. If I redid it, I would put a metal floor with a grate that allows for stuff to fall through. But the problem I was trying to eliminate was making sure that poop and pee from here didn't fall in that feeder right there. And I was protecting it because again, if you get poop falling in the food, then you're adding to the parasite load and that's a bad thing. So. If I redid all this again, I wouldn't put the feeders under the bed. That would be the only change that I would make is these feeders that are under each one, I would do metal on the bottom and I wouldn't put a feeder underneath there. Now these feeders currently, the way they're set up, um, I like them in that waste becomes bedding. And that's a positive because straw and hay is about the same price. And when all they do is throw the stems out of these particular feeders, I'm constantly filling in on the bedding and it works really well during the winter and, and all that good stuff. So this is the structure of it. Now, the one last thing I wanna show you is that if you use my feeder design that, that eliminates waste in such an incredible way, it's over here, it actually becomes a secondary shelter for these subdominant goats or new goats into the area that just are too scared to go in even when the storm hits. And if you look right over here, this, because of the way the roof line is, and again, you can get these designs on packcoats.com, and the amount of waste that this feeder creates is so little, it functions super well, and I have a big one for the big boys, and that's on that design that you can get on packcoats.com. I have an intermediate in does and a smaller one, and that's over there in the doe shelter, but they use it to get out of the rain because this is wide enough and there's enough waste on the ground that that becomes bedding. And in a pinch, especially when I have a new goat or I have goats that are just super cautious to lay down with the other goats, they will use this as a shelter as well. And it works really nicely during those rainstorms and that sort of thing. So hopefully that helps you. The one thing I do wanna mention that I didn't is don't forget during the winter, if you let their bedding pile up, one of the advantages of letting their bedding pile up is that underneath it begins to like ferment. 
Um, and as a result of that, it actually brings up heat. And so that is my system is that during the winter, I let it pile up, I clean it all out in the spring and I'm hauling off tons of weight in wet nastiness. But at the same time, that's been fermenting and creating heat all winter long up through the bedding. So that's something to consider in the equation as well. So, Mark Warnke, PackGoats.com. I hope that's helpful.